in the time when these people would be forced to flee from their homeland. Little was left for those whose old lives were now covered under ash. Although walking into a new era and out of the old, the future for the Dunmer of Morrowind would at first seem unclear, and yet this race of elves would continue on, away from where they came. How did it come to this? It's a story of despair and sorrow, yet one with glimmers of hope that shine through even when they were faced with an impossible obstacle. It begins at the start of the Fourth Era, after the closing of the Oblivion Gates. Secured now from the forces of the Daedra, Nern was missing something. Vivac. He had disappeared at some point, and nobody truly knows what happened to him. Some have hypothesized that perhaps he traveled to another realm. Others believe he simply faded out of existence, and without the worship of others, his essence vanished. Wherever he might have gone, it was clear at this point that his effects on this world were waning. This was important, as during his time here, his presence and power was the one and only thing preventing a massive boulder named Bardao from striking the city of Vivek's residence. There are many beliefs regarding the origin of this rock, although no one knows for certain. Many believe that the god of madness, Sherogorath, sought to have some fun, and whether through spite of Vivek, hatred of the Dunmer and their city, or outright madness on its own, felt the need to hurl the rock downwards from the sky. Sherogorath or not, and regardless of how it was created, or its purpose, during this event, Vivek somehow stopped the boulder in its path, saving Vivek City from destruction, and suspending the rock in the air. His actions, however, did not only save the city, they prevented the explosion of Red Mountain, something that was not foreseen to happen until it finally did. In the fifth year of the Fourth Era, after the Oblivion Crisis and Vivek's disappearance, Bardao had already begun to destabilize, and the inevitable was imminent. In almost an instant, the rock resumed its previous course and slammed into the city. This caused the eruption of the nearby volcano, Red Mountain, spewing ash and death across the region of Morrowind and nearby islands. The Dunmer people were stunned and had no evacuation plan in place. Morrowind was their home for thousands of years, and nobody had anticipated that it would ever be any different. They immediately began emigrating to other areas, such as Skyrim and Solstheim. These events would later be referred to as the Red Year, a time of suffering and consequence for the Dunmer people. Even two centuries later, we can find history of their struggles. When traveling to the northeastern corner of Skyrim, near the border of Morrowind, we find a tower named the Refugee's Rest. Near the tower sits a book. The book titled Decree of Monument, describes the tower as a memorial to this place where the Dunmer once met, to find their lost loved ones, and to leave notes for those who could not be found. There is a place where the Dunmer were openly welcomed into Skyrim by the Nords who were kind and showed mercy during the Red Year and it shows that even during harsh times, they were willing to accept the Dunbar refugees with arms open.
even on the island of Solstheim, where many Dunmer fled to, we can find ash covering the ground, still constantly falling from the sky, even so far away from the volcano, which has continued to erupt for the past 200 years. Having previously belonged to the Nords, this island was given to the Dunmer during their time of need. In the books on the Red Ear, written by Melis Ravel, he says he felt the need to seek out first-hand accounts of the Red Ear by traveling to Morrowind itself and interviewing the locals, rather than simply studying the subject at the College of Winterhold. In his book, he wrote about a conversation he had with a man in Morrowind, named Dralin Vess, who described his memory of the Red Ear when it first occurred. The man lived all the way in southern Morrowind, near Black Marsh, and even there felt the effects of the eruption. He claimed the ground rumbled and shook, and water seeped up through cracks in the ground. He ran to the nearest city out of desperation, seeking shelter in a place that offered none, as the city itself was falling apart due to the eruption. The walls cracked and fell, as homes crumbled. As some citizens screamed and were drowning to the water, something miraculous happened. People from every class of society started helping each other. The poor farmers and rich alike helped to save others, tearing rubble off of bodies and dragging those drowning out of the water. Hundreds managed to survive on this day thanks to the cooperation of the Dunmer people. This was only one of the stories Malice recorded in his books, and there are countless others like it that can still be found today. Through the tragedy of the Red Ear, a bond developed between the Dunmer, a strength they held together, empowered by the memory and the losses they all shared. A bond that would endure for years to come, even now as they're oppressed in other lands. During Skyrim, we find that over the years, the Dunmer have done their best to integrate into the Nordic society. However, due to recent political unrest and a civil war, the locals have begun frustratedly pinning the blame on the first vulnerable group they can find. In Windhelm specifically, we find that the Dunmer make up a substantial population of the city. It's not all good news, however, as most of the Dunmer here live in one section of the city, called the Grey Quarter, segregated from the rest for debatable reasons. Throughout the city, the Dunmer are despised by the Nords, whose ancestors once welcomed them graciously into their snowy kingdom. This animosity goes both ways, however, as we can see in our conversation with Ambaris Rendar, a Dunmer who lives in the Grey Quarter in Windhelm. Things have been a lot worse around here since Ulfric took over. Why are there so many Dark Elves here? Where else would we be? When the Red Mountain burned, you could scarcely breathe in Morrowind. So we came west. Windhelm is the first city on that road. And here we are. If we had known the Nords would be so unwelcoming, we may have kept walking. How were the Dark Elves treated in Windhelm? Well, you see where we have to live. This forgotten alley. All the filth from the upper quarters flows downhill, like they say. Good luck getting one of the guards to help with anything. I tried to get Ulfric to even come down here to see the squalor, but the High Lord of His Mightiness couldn't find the time. Feeling neglected and rejected, the Dunmer here now live their lives in the shadow of their Nordic neighbors. And although some simply wish to leave, there are those in the city who still look forwards with optimism, hoping for the eventual return of the respect the Dunmer once held here. 
The destruction caused by Red Mountain likely didn't stay confined to Morrowind, however. When we travel farther north of Windhelm to the city of Winterhold, we find when speaking to the locals that a disaster occurred in this city some time ago. Known as the Great Collapse, it was responsible for destroying much of the city. In the book on the subject, we learn that over the course of a year, violent waves from the Sea of Ghosts repeatedly battered the city. The origin of the storms that led to the Great Collapse is not entirely known, but the book speculates they might have been caused by aftershocks resulting from Red Mountain's explosion 117 years earlier. Locals in the city blamed the mages in the College of Winterhold, as it survived completely undamaged. If we speak to Savas Arun, the Dunmer Archmage at the College, he gives us his opinion. The Great Collapse, as it has come to be known. An unfortunate natural disaster that ravaged the area. The College fared far better than the city of Winterhold, but it was not left untouched. What caused the Great Collapse? No one is sure of the cause. Some believe the eruption of Red Mountain had far-reaching consequences that were only felt years later. I know there are some who have blamed the College, said that we were responsible. I assure you this is not the case. Whether it was Red Mountain that was responsible for the collapse or not, it is clear that its eruption likely affected the lives of people far and wide. The Dunmer people endured throughout, and found themselves humbly accepting the kindness and help of others when they had nowhere else to go. To this day, almost 200 years after the eruption, Morrowind remains less habitable, although it is slowly recovering. History is something often forgotten as time passes, and sometimes we have to remind ourselves not to let the sacrifices of previous generations go unremembered. Let no man or mer ever forget the lives that were lost to one of the most tragic events in Tamrielic history, the Red Year. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ku, and I'll see you in the next video.